So this is a deload workout, nothing really amazing in this workout. I stayed around RPE 7.5 to 8 RPE scale and based on sticking with 225 for 5x5 five five was really a, uh, what would that be? My best one rep max on a pause bench was 303. So 225, 225 divided by 303 would be about 74% of my one rep max. and. You know, percentages never really made a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, they made a lot of sense to me to a certain degree, especially when you're beginning, when you're training. But I don't know. I just think on any given day, things can change so much, which is kind of why I want to slowly convert to RPE scale because it's sort of like it makes more sense. But the problem with RPE scale is a lot of subjectivity to it, and it takes a lot of practice, and it's a whole skill set. So I've been trying to learn a little bit more about RTS. But in this video, I kind of want to talk about just kind of how what the purpose of a deload is and sort of what I'm learning. I used to think of deloading as a, a way as to like cut all training or completely stop and take a break. It's that whole black and white attitude where you know, you're polarizing, you're either all in or you're all out. You either train hard or you don't train at all. And I think there's a lot of varying degrees that you just sometimes forget about and that's kind of what I'm learning and sort of what I'm beginning to understand for me personally kind of how deloads work and I think why you should take deloads is really for joint recovery. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest things because it's, it's so arguably easy to push yourself you can push yourself into the ground you can train as hard as you want and if you have extra time and you don't have a lot of obligations you can just keep training and i think that is the you'll quickly learn it's a wrong approach however i think training a lot and training often has its place i just think that for for most people or the way you need to understand deloads or the way i'm beginning to understand is deloading is is again joint recovery because the joints don't recover as fast as the muscles because usually you can probably train your chest every day you can probably squat every day obviously the intensity will change and your muscles will recover quickly your body will adapt to anything but the thing is the actual things that hold you together your bones and your ligaments that connect your body together the hinges on the door so to speak uh take a take a bit of a beating and they don't exactly recover the same way and they also don't take a beating the same way, right? So you keep training week after week, and you can keep building up, and you get stronger, muscles get stronger, but then joints, ligaments, connective tissue does not. It actually gets more beat up, and there's lots of inflammation. And kind of what I've been doing uh, for my own personal lifting is that I've been feeling that my AC joint's been giving me problems. It's a ligament. The clavicle attaches to the acromion process, and this is one of those things that's been giving me issues. And it's one of those pains where it's not a muscle. I mean, it's kind of hard to form roll. There are ways, but it's not really a muscle. It's kind of like a joint capsule. It's a lig lig ligamentous tissue. I think that's how you say it. But the idea is that you need to use deloads as a way to adjust your training volume. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to cut training altogether, or even if the train is super low intensity. It just simply means you need to adjust training volume accordingly so that your body can recover a little bit faster. So that way you can go through undulating cycles. And that's sort of how I'm beginning to understand it. And for me, again, for me specifically, I'll speak for myself, is that just a way for my body to make sure that I can keep pushing hard every single week. It seems like I'm finding that I, I, I usually get hurt fourth or fifth week. And why is that? Well, probably because I push a little too hard or I lose a little bit of my form. Something degrades. And the idea is that I'm going to deload every fourth week or every so three-week ramp-up cycles. Uh, or in some cases, ramp down. Just kind of depends on kind of what I'm thinking. But the idea is it gives me some sort of framework to work with, and everything changes from you know day to day depending on what's going on in my life. But it just so happens I had a vacation plan, and it just was perfect timing to take a deload. In training, it just seems like there's just so many things that you hear from other people, so from other great lifters, and you get other ideas, and they're very subjective, and you don't really understand a lot of this stuff until you actually do it yourself, until you come to a crossroads of knee pain, shoulder pain, back pain, or any issues for that matter, and you learn how to work around them. You learn the idea of kind of like how deloads work for you. And you might hear someone say, like I heard like Jeremy Hamilton say, you know, uh, there's, you know, I don't think you should take deloads or if you shouldn't take a deload at all. And he probably meant that in a certain context. And I kind of like, uh, you know, I kind of, I heard it as, okay, you shouldn't take a deload. But anyways, I kind of like to hear your thoughts. What, how do you see deloads uh, as, uh, as far as kind of how do you fit them in your training? What's your opinion of them? I like to hear from you because a lot of people that some of you watch my channel have been training a lot longer than me. And I like to get your uh, opinion and some of your advice. Uh, I got uh, two more vid two more workout videos are deload workouts and I'm going to just talk about deloading for my next two workout videos and then I go back to a normal training schedule afterwards. Anyways, thanks for watching my video. If you get to this point, click like if you haven't already and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.